In this video, we solve problem 5.1.16 from Essentials of Statistics, 6th edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says the accompanying table describes results from groups of 10 births from 10 different sets of parents. The random variable X represents the number of girls among 10 children. Use the range rule of thumb to determine whether one girl in 10 births is a significantly low number of girls. And then down here again, it says use the range rule of thumb to identify a range of values that are not significant. First, we want the maximum value in the range. So that's the maximum value in the range of values that are not significant. So let's look at this. This says that the probability of getting zero girls out of the 10 girls is 0.005. The probability of getting one girl out of 10 is 0.011 and so on. Probability of getting seven girls out of 10 is 0 0.115. Um, so this is telling us what the probability is associated with each number of girls. And you're talking about 10 births. Out of 10 births, you could have zero girls or one girl or two girls all the way through to 10 girls. Now, when we want the maximum value in that um, range of values that are not significant, what you want to find is the mean plus two standard deviations. So in order to find that maximum value, you need to find the mean, then you need to find the standard deviation, and then you need to compute the mean plus two standard deviations. So let's do that. In order to do that, I will share my paper with you. Okay, in order to find the mean, what I'd like to do is complete this table here. And remember, whenever you're finding the mean, given a prob probability distribution, all you're doing is you're taking the x values and multiplying by the corresponding probability. And then you're adding those together. So I will find x times the corresponding probability right here. So we've got a 0, and then we've got a 0 0.011, and then we have 0, 0.0. And then I'm taking this and I'm multiplying it by two, I get 0 0.70. This number multiplied by three is 0 .3, uh, 0 0.345. This number multiplied by four. And you just keep going. I've got 0.242 times five there. Oops. That's 1.210, 0 0.203 times 6. Seven times 0 0.115. 0 0.038 times 8. Zero point zero one two times nine. And then you want to take this number and multiply it by 10, which just moves the decimal over once. Okay. So you want to take those values and add them together to find the mean. So I'll do that here. Now you could also do this in Excel. So I'll show you how to do it in Excel in a minute after we finish this part. And we should get the same answer either way. It's always good to have to try multiple ways of doing it. Just to check. Sometimes when I'm adding numbers on a list like this, I can accidentally skip one. Or maybe I'll type something in incorrectly. So if I typed everything incorrectly, the sum of the x's times the corresponding probabilities are uh, is given to be this. So that's the mean. And then the standard deviation can be found first by finding this variance. You take the x's squared and you multiply by the corresponding probability, and then you add those together, and then you subtract the mean squared, and then you just take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. So in order to calculate this, first I need the x's squared. I'll put those in this column. 
So I have zero, one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, six squared, seven squared, eight squared, nine squared, and 10 squared. And we're taking those and we're multiplying by probabilities. So you wanna be very careful. Make sure you multiply by the right thing. So we're taking the x's squared, which are in this column, and we're multiplying those by the probabilities, which are in this column. Now it's much faster in Excel, so you can do this in Excel if you prefer. So you have zero times that, which is zero, one times that number, which is 0 0.11, or 0 0.011. Then I've got four times that 0 0.35. That's 0 0.140. Nine times that number. That's 1.035. 16 times that number. And you have 25 times that number. Thirty six times that number. Forty nine times that number. Sixty four times that number. You can see why it's preferable to do this in Excel. As long as you don't make any data entry and errors, excuse me. It's usually more accurate as well because you're not likely to make a typing error as you type in the um, arithmetic problems that you're doing here. And you're not likely to make a transcription error as you write down what you see on your calculator. So there's a lot of room here for both arithmetic errors and errors in transcribing what you're writing. Okay, so if I want the variance, I take these guys and I add them together and I subtract the mean squared. So first I'll add those together. I'm doing that on my calculator off to the side. Okay, and provided I did everything correctly, we get that and we're subtracting that 5.105, that's our mean squared. And you get approximately 3.037975 and the um, standard deviation is the square root of that answer. Now in practice, I don't actually type in the answer again. I just take the answer on my calculator and I say square root of answer, ANS equals, and that gives me approximately 1.7429. Okay, so now let's go back to that screen that shows us the homework problem. Okay, so we're right here. It says find the maximum value in the range of values that are not significant. So the range of values that are not significant um, span from the mean minus two standard deviations to the mean plus two standard deviations. So we want that maximum value and the minimum value. But first, we, um, I wanted to come back here to this screen to see what the fine print said. The fine print says to round to one decimal place. Let's say we're drawing this on a number line. These are the values that are considered not significant. And they go from the mean 
plus two standard deviations at the top end. I guess I would go from here to here, from the mean minus two standard deviations at the lower end to the mean plus two standard deviations at the top end. So now that you have the mean and the standard deviation, you can calculate the maximum value in that range and the minimum value in that range. The first they, first they want the maximum value. So we want the mean plus two standard deviations, which is 5.105 plus two times this number here. That's, approxim that's an approximation actually have the actual standard deviation, the exact answer in my calculator. So I'll just double that and I'll add that 5.105. And then I'll round to one decimal place because I know that that's what they want. So this is 8.6. That's approximately 8.6 girls that would be normal out of those 10 births. Um, or the highest non-significant value. To find the lowest non-significant value, we'll take the mean and subtract two standard deviations. And that is approximately 1.6 girls. Okay, let's go back to our homework assignment. There it is. The maximum value was 8.6. We did that calculation. The minimum value was 1.6. And then the question says, based on the result, is one girl in 10 births a significantly low number of girls? Now remember, if we go back to this image over here, a significantly high number of girls would be a number of girls in this range. And a significantly low number of girls would be a, a number of girls in that range. So this is 8.6 girls. So any more girls than 8.6 girls, so nine girls or 10 girls. That's gonna be significantly high. That's what we have on this side. That's a significantly high number of girls. And any number of girls beyond this 1.6, that's significantly low. So one is less than 1.6, so yes, it is significantly low. So say yes, one girl is a significantly low number of girls because one girl is below the range of values that are not significant. So that's our answer. And that's all we have to do for this question.